Hi everybody, my name's Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. So today we're going to be doing a mini review for some expansions of the game Villages of Valeria. And if you're unfamiliar with that, you probably should check out my five things you need to know about Villages of Valeria video first. That was a horrific mouthful. Um, and then possibly come back here afterwards and see how you feel maybe about some of the expansions because you do need the base game to play these games. Okay, so that's the disclaimer out of the way. Are you all set with me? Let's see how many expansions we can get through in oh, about, I don't know, six minutes. So in this video we're going to talk about five separate expansions that are available for Villages of Valeria and it seems like you can acquire them in different ways. So we're going to start off by looking at monuments, events, guild halls and then as the box points out landmarks and architects. And I'm going to talk about them individually because it's unlikely you would buy all of the expansions together um, and I'll do my best to give you a little bit of insight into each one. And just before we begin, if you'd like to get a closer look at any of the components or things that are in any of these expansions, you can check out my expansion unboxing video. Yeah, plug, plug, plug. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the Monuments expansion. And in it, you get eight Monuments cards and four Adventurer cards. So how does this differ kind of from what's in the original game? Well, the Monuments cards are another type of card you can buy. Um, they're definitely more difficult to obtain, but they are worth more victory points. The adventurer cards are more of the same adventurer cards we all kind of know and love. So the big question then is how does it affect the original game? Well, by having something kind of so expensive you have to work towards, it really gives the game a lot of focus. And it's also a good place to put kind of additional materials and things you might have after kind of adding a lot to your tableau. Gives the game a bit of longevity, I think, and a bit of focus. Um, so, is this expansion worth having? Um, absolutely, I think the Monuments expansion really ups the game for Valeria. It was the kind of thing I felt that was missing in the base game where you could only buy buildings or attract, you know, buy um, people to come to your village. And I wish there had been some other option for later in the game where you had resources spare but you weren't using them. And this really fits that gap nicely. The second expansion I'm going to look at is called Events. Um, and this one actually came in my Villages of Valeria main box itself. So I don't know how it is you can acquire it. I think I've seen them for sale other places. Um, maybe it's because I have a, a Kickstarter version or something like that, I don't know. But um, the, the Events expansion is available. So what's actually in it? Um, so what you get are eight events cards and four adventure cards. So well, how different is this from what's in the original game? Well, the events are the new addition here. Um, you're not kind of used to having those. And um, what they are is you have a series of event cards and you shuffle them into the building's deck. And as they're revealed, something will happen. Um, some of them are good, some of them are negative, um, you know, kind of the usual thing. And then the adventure cards, yet again, add more to just the adventurer's pile. Um, because in general, there are fewer adventures than there are buildings. So, you know, it makes, it's nice to have more of them to give you more options. Um, as many of you will remember that the adventure cards often have scoring options on them or ways to get bonus points. So having more of those around, I think, can only be positive. Um, so how does this affect the original game? Um, this expansion is definitely more subtle than others. Um, the events, I don't know, didn't seem to really change the state of the game a whole lot. I mean, they're, they're because they're, they're random, something good could, could happen to you, something bad. It doesn't majorly ga change gameplay because you never know when an event might actually occur. occur. So you can't plan around it, it just adds a random element. Um, so do I think this is worth having? Um, I think it's the one of the least strong out of the expansion piles. However, if you do love a bit of random um, or you like that kind of element, then this is probably the one you should be looking at. Um, Cause it, you know, it's the events aren't game changing, but um, they're still kind of interesting. They're just, I don't think it stands out as well as some of the other expansions. All right, and onto the guilds expansion. So what exactly do you get in the box? So you get four event cards, four building cards and four adventurer cards. 
So you might ask yourself, you know, how does the, how is this different from what we get in the original game? And the answer is it isn't. It's um, just more of kind of the same stuff. Um, now, obviously, the event cards are new if you haven't played with the event expansion before. Um, but otherwise here, these are just all more of the same things you might have enjoyed before. So how does it affect the original game? Well, the answer is, I suppose, it really it doesn't. It just gives you more of the stuff that you know and enjoy. So do I think this expansion is worth having? Um, I do think this expansion is less impactful than others. However, if you're very happy with how the base game plays and you simply want more of that goodness, um, then this is the expansion you probably should be looking at. Okay, so we're finally onto the expansions that come in a box. Um, so firstly, let's talk about landmarks. So what do you get in per the proverbial box? Um, it'll just have to excuse me reading this, there's quite a bit of it. So you get five landmark cards, 35 landmark tokens and 30 new building cards. Um, so you can see here the first three expansions there all come in booster packs, um, whereas these last two come in a box, like so. So there seems to be more room for more stuff in these boxes. And of course, they're priced more expensive accordingly. So um, how different is this from what's in the original game? Okay, so these landmark cards and tokens are are a little reminiscent of monuments. However, these don't cost any resources to acquire. So what happens is you can um, discard a card from your hand during someone else's follow action to gain a particular token. Um, and these tokens then are worth victory points. So if you have a full set of all the different types, they're worth so many points. If you have more of them than your, and than your opponents, you also get points. And some of the cards interact with these features as well to give you more points. Um, I think it's really, really interesting stuff actually to use your follow action in a different way. So how does it affect the original game? Um, well, the first point is, is that it kind of slows it down a little bit because you have an extra step to think about um, in your follow step than you would as normal. However, I do find it makes the game very tactical and I loved always being able to do something. I think it added value as well to the building cards in your hand that you may not have needed later game, but instead now had to match with the right symbols to be able to acquire the building tokens. See where I'm going here? Um, overall, I, th I think it adds a lot to the game. Um, so, is this one worth having? Um, absolutely. Um, I really, really enjoyed the way this changed the gameplay. Um, and kind of, it really spiced up actually the base game. So I particularly enjoyed that. Not to mention the fact that the components are just all kinds of adorable. And our final expansion, Architects. So, what's in the box? So you get new Castle Grounds cards, six end gold cards, 24 building cards, and seven adventure cards. You can tell this expansion comes in a box. Um, okay, so how different is it though from what's in the original game? Um, the addition of the castle ground card um, really changes gameplay because what it does is, it's like your castle card at the start of the game um, provides you with a resource of any type. So does the castle ground card, except you have to discard a card to activate it. The addition of the gold cards is new as well. Um, and I think it kind of, it offers you more ways to win, which is always a positive. So how does this affect the original game then? Um, for a start, the game is faster because you start with more resources so you can build things up a lot quicker. And I sometimes wonder if this is to counteract the addition of, you know, the expansion cards that the decks get quite big. So um, you it helps with speeding the game up. Um, the gold cards, I think, are, are a really good idea because there's a, there's a, there are a lot of goal-oriented things you're doing in this game, right? So you want to get enough resources to buy a particular building, you want to get enough symbols to acquire a particular adventure, and this just adds kind of more rewards for collecting particular types of symbols and things like that. Um, so it's another layer of kind of points grabbing. Okay, so finally, is this worth having? Um, this expansion really adds a lot to the game, particularly that castle ground thing. It's the kind of element you almost want to be playing with all of the time. Um, apart from that, it really adds more to the game um, that we already kind of knew and loved. There's a lot of cards in this. And the gold cards really are a, a welcome addition um, because the more... The, you find the more that you play the game, the more ways you want to use your resources and the expansion seems to just offer you further examples of that. 
Um, you know, I do think this expansion is the one that gives you the most bang for your buck. So now you've heard about all the different types of expansions. Here's just a little bit of an overview. The first thing to point out is that you could play with all of these expansions combined. Part of me, you know, dies inside when I think of such a thing, but you could do it and you might have a lot of fun with it too. Um, for me, I find I would much rather pick and choose which expansions I wanted to play with at what time, making the game feel almost modular. Um, the other thing to point out is that the first three expansions um, listed here, which is um, Guild, Event and Monument, are all in booster packets. So they're they're, and they're pretty cheap, they're priced accordingly. Now there's not a lot of cards in them, but they are cheaply picked up. Um, and I think that's nice. I think it's a nice way to be able to add a little bit of something to your deck without breaking the bank per se. Um, and I definitely think they're ones worth looking at. Um, I also love the fact that the rules come on one, like one single card for easy reference. And I think the world needs more of that stuff. Um, they they're fit just perfectly. Okay, so the other thing to point out is that the expansion cards um, feel just like those in the base game, feel absolutely no different. However, they have started to curl up over time. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think they just need some weight on them. Um, but I thought I should let you know that as well. Um, my final thoughts is, so if I had to pick some of these expansions to play with my base game, where would I go? Um, my first pick would be Monuments. I think that really helps the game a lot. The, the kind of the long term driven strategy and a place to put your cards and things like that in the later game. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Landmarks um, and of Architects. Um, oddly enough, they come in the same box. Um, I really like the Landmark tokens and I love the idea of being able to use my follow action for something other than a follow. I think that's fantastic stuff and it gives extra value to the cards in your hand that weren't there before. And then of course Architects adds that whole Castle Grounds feature to be able to speed up the game and then just more of goodness into the game. Um, so I'd be crazy not to pick that one out. So those are my top three, those are my top three expansion picks. Um, have you played with any of these before? Have you got favourites? Um, have you tried playing with all of them? I'd love to know how that worked. I've, I'm a little bit paranoid to try it out. Um, but yeah, so that's everything I've got to tell you about the Villages of Valeria expansions. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. For more authentic board game reviews, why not like this video or subscribe to the channel for updates. Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about any of the expansions for Villages of Valeria, why not leave them in the comments below? I'd really, really like to hear from you. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care, everybody.